Yo, what's up everybody, here I am with another video, and this time we're going to talk about the second round of the playoffs, or as some call it, the conference semi-finals. And this is basically a follow-up to my first round predictions, I want to predict the second round as well. Just so you know, I did get all of my, like, easy picks right. And let's get right into it. My first prediction is Suns versus Dallas. I did like Dallas Mavericks overcome the J Utah Jazz in six games, especially when you consider that uh, Luka couldn't even play the first, I believe, three games it was, and still they were able to win it in six. Luka's first playoff series win, which is nice uh, for him to like accomplish. And Utah, I kind of, I kind of have seen that comment that this team has kind of hit their ceiling last year when they were the first seed and weren't able to like go to the finals where people thought maybe this is their year and then this year is the 15th i kind of i kind of have seen that coming and uh dallas yeah they, they've been pretty good and honestly that team might be a dark horse right now you know, i like the suns i do think that chris paul is basically getting younger while he's playing phenomenal performances by him but my main issue is with them devin booker like the fact that he got hurt a hamstring is is not an easy thing to overcome yes he did play game six but that was nowhere near the usual devin booker if he comes back and plays at 100%, uh, I would say they're the clear-cut favorites against the Mavs because I do not think that uh, pound for pound when you compare these two teams that the, the Mavs can compete with them just because of the bench. I think the Suns bench is much better than, than the Mavericks bench. But still, this is going to be a competitive series. Considering that Booker is back, I'm going to go with Suns in six. But... You know, this is one of those swing series, you know, one guy gets injured and everything can change in this one. Because I believe if one of the two big stars, Chris Paul or Devin Booker fall, it's not going to be like the Pelican series. They can't overcome them just with one superstar, you know. They need both to overcome the Mavs. The Mavs are hot. They they really believe. So this is going to be a tough matchup for the Suns anyways. But if one of the two main guys is not going to be able to play the full series, the Mavs going to jump on them. But... Still, as of now, I'm picking the Suns in 6 over the Mavs, but that shall be a good series anyways. The second one in the Western Conference is definitely one that people probably anticipated to happen this way. Anyways, Warriors versus Memphis. Yes, I did pick the Nuggets uh, for an upset because I did go for an injury for the Warriors. And no, they stayed healthy. Um, it's kind of cool that they did stay healthy because now you see how good they actually are and they have all their powers together. And it's really fun to watch. Memphis did overcome the Timberwolves just like I predicted in six games. But to be fair, uh, the the Timberwolves should have won that series. They threw three out of those four losses easily with big time leads, with big time momentum, and somehow they still managed to lose it in six. And as good as Anthony Edwards was, uh, who had a brilliant coming out party for his pl first ever playoff series, as bad was actually Carl Anthony Towns. Like, he was mainly pretty bad in the clutch and in the fourth quarter of some of these losses. So. Um, yeah, that was a pretty bad series for Carl Anthony. Good one for Anthony Edwards. And not so good, to be honest, for Ja Morant. Ja had a pretty subpar series in my mind. So a lot of people at the Grizzlies go into the finals this year, which I thought was uh, shooting for the moon. I didn't see that at all. And this series didn't give me any confidence to change my mind about them. I do think that the Warriors will win this series. And I do think it's going to be in six games max. So Warriors in six is my prediction. I think the Warriors are bound for the conference finals, to be honest. They look really good. I don't think they're going to lose against Memphis in a seven-game series. Let's move right into the Eastern Conference. This is another series that I actually really like. I picked both of these winners, Sixers versus uh, the Heat, the first versus the fourth seed. Um, but here's the main problem with the Sixers, like every year. Uh, Embiid is going to go probably injured into this series or like there are multiple reports out but as of now it seems like he might not be able to play at least the first game or maybe he's going to play who knows but it already started every year it's the same with the Sixers and Joel Embiid and injuries so um, I'm just going to go with a solid pick here with a solid team that usually gives it everything they have 
and is one of the better defensive teams in the league anyways and if MB cannot play this full series anyways I ain't gonna pick the Sixers I'm gonna pick the Miami Heat in six games again just because I do believe that the Miami Heat are one of those complete basketball teams they may not have that clear cut superstar that is gonna carry them in big moments but once they do get it together there are they have probably like two, three guys who can finish games if they're on their day. So, yeah, I I'm picking the Heat, but I will root for the Sixers. I have a heart for them since I was always growing up a Allen Iverson fan, but I just don't see them winning this series. I hope uh, I'm wrong on this one. And now the most anticipated and probably the most tight one uh, when it comes to the matchups, the most anticipated matchup, the Milwaukee Bucks against the Boston Celtics. The Boston Celtics, oh my god, I did pick the Nets in seven, and oh my god, was I wrong. They weren't even, like, there were a couple of games that were close, but as far as finishing those games, Tatum and Brown did a much better job than Kyrie and definitely than KD. So the Celtics were extremely poised, and they look like a pretty good team out there. Maybe someone that you could, go, could go and win on the championship. But I must say, people got to put some respect on that big boy's name, Milwaukee. That's Giannis. Giannis is simply the best player in the game. I don't understand why people underrate this guy so much. Winning MVPs, Defensive Player of the Year awards and stuff. And Finals MVPs, Championships. At this point, it's kind of disrespectful what they do to Giannis. Kind of like how it was early on when LeBron was winning championships and people still hated on him. It's kind of the same with Giannis. I do understand it. It's not flashy. He's not going to come with the behind-the-back, step-back fadeaways. But he's, he's a train, man. And he's running through everybody. And I know that Chris Middleton might not play uh, fully in this series as well. But I still pick the Milwaukee Bucks in 7. Because I do think that Drew Holiday is someone who can lock up everybody. He can, You can put him on Tatum. You can put him on Brown. You can put him on anybody. And he's going to be right there. And as far as Giannis goes... I don't think that uh, Tice or Horford can guard this man, honestly. And if they built a so-called wall in front of him, I do have, I think he has enough uh, shooters out there to finish those games. So I'm picking the Bucks in seven. Yeah, these are my predictions. Uh, shall be fun. I do think all of these four series have potential to be legendary. We didn't get a seven-game series in the first round, but I do think... We're gonna see at least one, if not multiple ones, in this one. This is gonna be this is gonna be a tough uh, NBA playoff conference semifinals. And let's see what happens. If you're new, please subscribe, like, comment. Love y'all. See y'all on the next one. Bye bye.